Welcome to the OceanGate Titan follow-up video that I promised you from last week. Um, at least eight ships and numerous U.S. Coast Guard vessels combed the seas in a huge search area centered around the Titanic wreck site looking for the Titan submersible that had gone missing in over 12,000 feet of water. One of the key vessels that was nearby, luckily, fortunately, was a French research vessel doing some research in the North Atlantic. What's special about her is she has a remotely operated vehicle called the Victor 6000. This is a 10 foot long tethered ROV that can reach the Titanic. It was almost serendipitous that she happened to be within range to respond uh, for this call. This, this, uh, Submersible has a manipulator arm with some blades on it that can cut away cables and debris that could be pinning down the Titan submersible near the Titanic wreck. However, she's not strong enough to lift the Titan itself if, uh, if they do find it intact. When we got this brief from the U.S. Coast Guard, this is Rear Admiral John Malger. He is commander of the 1st Coast Guard District. Let's see what he has to say. This morning, an ROV, a remote operated vehicle, from the vessel Horizon Arctic, discovered the tail cone of the Titan submersible approximately 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic on the sea floor. The ROV subsequently found additional debris. In consultation with experts from within the Unified Command, the debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. Upon this determination, we immediately notified the family. All right, so a catastrophic loss of the pressure vessel has occurred. Uh, the bodies that were inside the pressure vessel were uh, eviscerated in the implosion and then subsequent explosion because equal and opposite reactions happening and the bodies will not be able to be recovered. So uh, this is another, uh, you know, honored site at sea now, another uh, burial place at sea for five more people. Uh, recovery efforts do continue. They did not stop because of this there because there's going to be an investigation. And so the remotely operated vehicles that are already in the area are going to document the entire scene and collect what they can. Now, I have some additional information for you since our last video, and I do want to thank the community. The amount of outreach you guys have done with me over the past seven days has been amazing. So thank you very much for all the positive comments and additional information. And that's what I want to share with you now is um, let's talk about the controller. I think I got more comments about the controller than anything else. Obviously, I've never owned a PlayStation 3, but the game controller that they were using to drive the Titan was a Logitech branded wireless controller. The problem is not that it's a game controller at all. It's actually a good idea, in my opinion. Uh, the fact that it was wireless was my concern. That's the point I was trying to make. But everyone jumped on the fact that I said that it was a PlayStation 3 controller. Now, where did I get that from? There is another promotional video on the website that's currently down. OceanGate.com is offline at the moment. Um, where they had a PlayStation 3 controller, they called it a PlayStation 3 controller, and it was clearly not this controller. So that's the controller controversy there. Again, the point is, it's not the brand, it's the fact that it was wireless. That was the problem I had. And then, uh, this was not the Titan's first trip to the Titanic. She had been making trips with uh, researchers and other people on board since 2021. So this was her third summer of doing expeditions down to and uh, uh, down to the Titanic wreck. Now, I could not find an exact number of dives. That was nowhere on the website that, that I could find. So, but we just know that this was not our first one. All right, second thing, toxic gas. Uh, smoke and emergency air breathing uh, is available for all the people on board. I wanna credit uh, Alan X El Mundo's YouTube website, and his link will be in the description for you. He actually went on this submarine. He has a fantastic video documenting his entire journey. I encourage everyone to go watch it because it really shows uh, the experience of the guest on board this uh, submersible with the Ocean Gate. I think it's really cool information and the fact that they did have some sort of air breathing apparatus uh, is important. They did have that. 
Now, now I thought the personal breathing environment hood looked a little strange, but uh, a lot of you sent me pictures of this is the type of hood they use in the aviation community. And we know that Stockton Rush, the CEO of OceanGate, was relying heavily on the experience of, of the aviation community in this project. So that's where this hood came from, was from uh, airplanes and I, even a congressman here is demonstrating one for you. This is what it looks like. Now, I'm from the submarine community. This is what we use. This is what I was used to. And so whenever I saw that hood, it didn't look right to me at all. I almost thought it was a joke, but nope, that's really what they used. But this is what professional submariners use. So if you find yourself taking a tourist trip on a deep submergent submarine, you might want to have uh, a, a device that looks like this. This is called an EAB, emergency air breathing is what that stands for. It's basically a hose to a regulator uh, and, a, and, a, and a mask that's uh, heat resistant. So it doesn't just melt on your face if there's a fire around. And the hood over the head is a flash hood. All right, so that explains the uh, air breathing part. Uh, a Mr. William Leggett from Twitter sent this and uh, this shocked me. It looks like the, the monitors, the flat screen monitors were screwed right into the side of the hull. Now, this may not be the carbon fiber on the other side of that. This could be some kind of insulation or liner that's on the inside of the submersible, uh, but either way it is enough to stabilize and support this, this flat screen monitor so that the operators can, can use it. Uh, but I would not recommend screwing anything into carbon fiber because that could cause cracking and then uh, perhaps weaken it just a little bit. And you don't want anything doing that you know, in these environments. So what happens next? Well, the United States Navy has a very cool piece of kit called FADOS. This is the flyaway deep ocean salvage system. And this could be used to bring up large pieces of the wreck if they find anything large enough that uh, the ROVs they have already on site can't pick up. So we may see the FADOS come into operation here. Uh, it, it's a very cool piece of uh, kit. It has a ship motion compensator on the lift line there uh, that prevents over pressure or over tension on the line as the ship rolls in the ocean. And um, it comes in three different sizes. There's a, a 15 kip, a 30 kip and a 60 kip. That's a, a kip is like a thousand pounds of force. So like I said, if they had the full one on it, they could lift up to 60,000 pounds. Honestly, I don't think they're gonna need anything other than maybe the smallest one, if not at all, because in my opinion, the Titan is in pieces except for those titanium end caps. They may wanna use the FADOS to retrieve those titanium end caps. That was the forward and after those. So we'll see if this goes. Now, I am not an expert on recovery, but a one Mr. Sal Mercagliano is, and he has a fantastic YouTube channel that you should check out called What's Going On With Shipping. His link is in the description as well. So I would like to turn over the keys of this story to him going forward because he is an expert in all things shipping and recovery and a lot of the laws that cover that. So I, I would be looking to his website for future updates on this. And if I could take a moment, I'd just like to address the uh, engineers and crew that worked on this project. You have become some of the most important engineers in the submersible community now. You have firsthand knowledge of this tragedy from where it began, the design, the construction, the testing, and the maintenance of this whole system, including the submersible vehicle itself. I know it's counterintuitive, but your experience here is very valuable and may prevent this from happening again. So I would encourage each of you to take your time, process grief and recover from this, and then come back into the industry and make sure that this never happens again. You're very important to this to us now. So thank you for all the wonderful messages. This will be the final update for me on this topic. Like I said, I'm turning it over to Sal from now on. I'm sure he'll have some great content going forward. I am going back to making Naval News videos this week with a regular update. And uh, we also have a brand new sub brief lecture coming out this Saturday. That's right, the Reefs Turkish AIP submarine uh, will be a brand new lecture on Patreon and YouTube members this Saturday, July 1st. See you all then. Thanks for watching, everybody.